In this module, I'm going to show you how to add a peripheral device to the MIPS FPGA system. The device that we're going to add this time is a buzzer, but the same process applies to any number of peripheral devices. So the goal of this module is to add this buzzer to the system using memory mapped I.O. The additional hardware you need for this lab is a passive buzzer. For example, there's one available here from DigiKey for one to two dollars. The steps for expanding the MIPS FPGA system to add this buzzer are to first add the buzzer hardware. So add a Verilog module that will drive a buzzer pin at the specified frequency. The second thing is to memory map the I.O. Physically connect the buzzer to the Nexus 4 DDR board and then write software to drive the buzzer. So let's start with the first step, writing the buzzer hardware. We're going to design a Verilog module called MFP HB Buzzer. So it's part of the MIPS FPGA system, MFP. It hangs on the HB light bus, HB, and the functionality is a buzzer. The clock of the system is at 50 megahertz and we're going to have a low asserted reset input, reset N. Num micros is the number of microseconds in half of a cycle of the desired frequency. And this is the value that's set by the user using memory mapped I.O. The buzz output gives a square wave output with that desired frequency. So we can see the module declaration at the bottom showing that interface. Here's an example of what the buzzer hardware should do. To buzz at 440 hertz, for example, the cycle time is 2,272 microseconds. So num micros should be set to half of that cycle time, or 1,136. As supporting hardware for the buzzer, we're also going to build a microsecond counter that counts the number of microseconds since system reset. The second step is to memory map the I.O. We choose to memory map num micros to memory address hex BF800038. In order to support this memory mapping, we'll need to modify the following Verilog modules. After we've completed this memory mapping, the following MIPS assembly language would write the value 1136 to the num micros variable. After we've completed the buzzer hardware and the memory mapped I.O., now we need to make the physical connection from the MIPS FPGA system to the Nexus 4 DDR board where we'll connect the buzzer. We'll route the buzz output from the buzzer hardware up through the MIPS FPGA hierarchy. In order to do this, we need to modify the Verilog modules MFP Sys and MFP Nexus 4 DDR. In the top level module, the MFP Nexus 4 DDR module, we'll connect it to the PMOD C port by naming that connection JC1. So if we take a look at the Nexus 4 DDR board, we'll see that PMOD C is located on the lower left of the Nexus 4 DDR board and we'll connect the buzzer to pin 1 of that port as well as ground. It doesn't matter which of the pins goes to ground and which one goes to pin 1. The final step in expanding our MIPS FPGA system to be able to access this peripheral is to write software to write to this memory mapped I.O. value. We'll write two helper functions, tone and no tone. Tone takes the input argument of frequency and then calculates the number of microseconds in half a cycle of that frequency and then writes that value to num micros using memory mapped I.O. No tone sets the value of num micros to zero which outputs no tone on the buzzer. To do this, we'll also modify the header file MFPIO to show this memory mapped I.O. And finally, we'll write the application that actually creates a song using the buzzer. So the left column shows the frequency and the column next to it on the right shows the duration of that frequency. In order to implement this, we'll also build another helper function called delay milliseconds that delays the program for num milliseconds. This was written in lab six. After we've modified and compiled our MIPS FPGA project in Vivado, we can now download it onto our board. So the first step is to physically connect our buzzer with our Nexus 4 DDR board. So I'll take the buzzer and take one pin, connect it to PMOD C pin 1, and take the other pin of the buzzer 
and connect it to ground of Piedmont C. Now we'll turn on the Nexus 4 DDR board and go to our Vivado project where we've created these new Verilog modules and routed our buzz output up through the MIPS FPGA hierarchy. After we've compiled it, we can now download that new bit file onto our Nexus 4 DDR board. Remember at this point to restart the MIPS FPGA system by pressing CPU reset. You can see the default program running on the LEDs. And now we load our song program that we wrote using load MIPS FPGA.bat. So in this session, I've shown how to add a buzzer to the MIPS FPGA system. The steps will be similar for any number of peripherals that you want to add. Step one, create the hardware. In this case, create the buzzer hardware. Step two, memory map the I.O. Step three, physically connect the peripheral, in this case the buzzer, to the Nexus 4 DDR board. And step four, write software to drive that peripheral.